Good evening, welcome to the June 11, 2019 meeting of the Quantic Township Council. Ms. Marsh. In accordance with the requirements of New Jersey's Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was included in the annual meeting, annual meeting notice which was filed in the office of the Township Clerk, posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, published as a legal notice in the Suburban Trends newspaper, and distributed to all persons requesting notice in accordance with Township policy. Please join me for a Pledge of Allegiance, filed by prayer and a moment of thanks for individuals serving our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most gracious providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all the people of Pequannock Township. Amen. 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 All right, clerk, please call the roll. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Here. Mr. Hurd? I am here. Mr. Phelan? I am here. <laughs> Mrs. Russell? Here. Mayor Cole? Here. Okay, uh, there are no presence, uh, presentations scheduled for this evening. At this time, are there any reports or volunteers serving our community? Mr. Spaziri? Mike Spivari, 35 West Franklin Avenue, for Glenick, New Jersey. And also the Vice Chair for uh, the Open Space Committee. Um, I guess most of you know what this book is, or maybe you don't, but it's a, uh, it's the Bible for the Open Space Committee. This is the past, present, and the future. We took, in 2012, almost a year to put this book together. We went through it, the document, paragraph by paragraph, map by map, and came up with this. And it is now part of what is now the uh, master plan. Um, last night we had a meeting with Eric, who is rewriting the master plan. And I personally, um, I don't want to say I don't like the way it's being done, but I think the way it's going to be done is not going to give the Open Space Committee the same um, future as what we have in this book. Because last night we were told that we won't be we won't be doing this book anymore, and that kind of upset me a little bit because somebody else is going to write what we as a committee want to see for the future. I understand that we're going to give him information and all this kind of stuff, and he's probably going to rifle this book to take all the information that we did in 2012 to do what he has to do for the new master plan. But, like I said, we took the time and many, many hours with the committee, going over paragraph by paragraph, and once that was done, I went up to the Lincoln Conservancy who helped write this particular document. So I spent days, I spent hours up there with these people, coming up with the best plan that we could have for open space. And not take it away from Eric, he probably will do a fantastic job. It's not my point, is that we as the committee are not going to have as much input as we had with this particular book because now this is our Bible. I know I understand you guys want to, you all want to do the master plan over again, and it hasn't been done since 1995, which is not my problem. We did what we were supposed to do in 2012. We did our portion of the, of the master plan the way it was supposed to be. And now, somebody else is going to do it for us. Now, if somebody can explain to me that he's going to do the same, have the same feelings, and I got to tell you, I've been on open space for like maybe 14 years. I was chairman for almost 12. 
and I, I just feel it's taken away our right to tell what we want for the future. I, I just don't see how that who doesn't live here is not familiar with all of the uh, things that we want to do unless we tell them. I, I don't want to interrupt you, Frank, but if, if you don't mind. I, I, I think there may be some miscommunication or maybe some misunderstanding. I don't believe the plan that the Open Space Committee did is currently a component of the master plan. It is. I, I presented it to the planning board and they accepted it. So they adopted it? Yes, they As did. an element of the master plan? Yes. Okay. So I did that personally. So the whole master plan, every element is being rewritten. I understand. That doesn't take that document away from the Open Space Committee. It takes the whole master plan, which is the jurisdiction of the planning board, and it creates a whole new document for the planning board. So that document doesn't get erased. As uh, far as its component as an element of the master plan, yes, there will be an update and a revision to what will be included in the master plan. But it doesn't take all of the effort, work, and dedication of you and the volunteers on the Open Space Committee and throw it out. It just changes the dynamic for the planning board. And I think to your statement that you made during your discussion, I would assume the overwhelming majority of information that they take for the master plan element will come from that. Plan. Right. That's it's true. Probably implemented. Yeah. So I don't. I don't think it's taking what you did and throwing it out the window so and replacing it for your committee or changing it for your committee. I think it's changing it for the planning board, which is the planning board's right through the master plan revision process. Right. But, not, I, but I, that's I, not just right. I it's not throwing it out for you guys. Right. They're not going to take that and say, "Oh, this is garbage." Yeah, no, they're going to take uh, it and uh, implement uh, it in the entire. Be, yeah. That's that's not. Incorporated into the, to the, the new master plan. I understand that. But then, again, an outsider is doing what? He's going to put newer stuff in here that I, I assume, and he said that we would be able to read the draft that he's doing. But, but, but you have input into it. He's, he's doing so at the direction of a steering committee and ultimately the planning board. So there will be public hearings, there will be discussions of what's in the plan, but that is that is the comprehensive master plan process as articulated under the municipal land use law. Right. It has to be re-examined or rewritten every 10 years. Right. So the and, goal... And so, so was this, that's why we did... The first one was 2002. We did it in 2012, which was 10 years later. Now, 10 years from now, who's gonna do it? Don't know. Huh. May not have to be. That's my point. It, well, it may not we, be. We have to. Be. We have, and I, again, I'm saying that the committee and the chairman, whoever it may be, and maybe me, and maybe somebody else, in ten years, should be able to say, okay, I'm going to re up, I'm going to do this over again, and include anything that we want that we did in the past, and, the and what I'm going to do in the future. Right. The committee absolutely has that right. Well, then I would imagine they can present it to the, the planning, planning board, and the planning board could amend the master plan and adopt it just as they did when you did that one. There's nothing. There's nothing. I think that's why I say I think there's a little bit of a misconception. Mm -hmm. It's 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 two different processes leading to one ultimate document. But if the committee wants to do something in two years, five years, ten years, provided the committee has the resources, the committee absolutely has the right to do. That. Well, I personally think that should be conveyed to Eric then, because he said, yeah, we can make amendments to whatever is in the master plan and not specifically do this again. And he's correct. You can. Not saying we will, but you can. That, that's my point. <laughs> Ryan was there last night and he said that we wouldn't be able, we won't do this anymore. No, and I said I, that anything from now going forward. So it's a consolidation effort to bring all the plans under one master plan. And then going forward, anything that changes would just be an amendment of that section of the plan. Right. So it could still be changed. Now, the other question that came up is, uh, you made a point about, I think, DEP. Uh, if it needs to be redone for a specific reason for open space fund, you had said it last night. Do you remember what it was? Green right. acres in order to if be able to right. right. plant that of grain, you have to have a plant. So right, exactly. That's when they would redo the plan. So let's say if in four years they went for the green acres plan or had to re up it, they would just redo it and it would just it would be done for that specific reason, but then it would if anything changed, it would just be an amendment to sure. 
what exists, what will exist going forward. Right. Okay. I'm not trying to take the job away from Eric because this is a pain job to do to try and gather all the information and and get it out there so that it, it, it is a futuristic look and also a past look of what this town is made of and how much open space we have and all that kind of good sure. stuff. Right. But I just wanted to I just That's why I, I don't I don't want you to have the perception that all your effort and the effort of the committee and the volunteers is being thrown out the window because I, I don't okay. believe that to be the case. I, I, and I believe the Open Space Committee still has the ability to make a recommendation to the planning board if they want to make updates or they want to re revise the plan. Right. Trust me, Frank, we don't want to take any work away from you. We want to keep no. you working. Yeah. <laughs> we'll even give you a 100% raise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you yeah, thanks. 100% of zero. That's yeah, another it's zero good. on the end of your salary. Thanks. Right, nice. I just wanted to yeah. uh, No problem. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Any other reports uh, from volunteers serving our community? <clears throat> I see none. Uh, next on the agenda is public comments. This public comment period will be limited to a total of 30 minutes. An additional period of public comment is reserved later in the meeting. Individuals are requested to limit their questions and comments to three minutes. If anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized. Come to the microphone. Provide your name and address for the record. Anyone? Karen? <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Karen Camp, 40 Banta Ave, Pompton Plains. Hi. Um, I was just um, wondering if Pequannock is going to do anything in support of uh, Pride Month, which is the month of June. Uh, we have lots of members of our uh, LGBT community uh, living here in town. So can we fly a flag or put up a banner or do something in support of Pride Month? I'm going to refer to... Uh, well, just just to bring the the council up to date, I did have the opportunity to speak with Ms. Camp. Hi, hi, nice to meet you in person. Nice to meet you. Um, and we did have a conversation. I did explain that the township hasn't had a past practice of getting engaged in social um, months. You know, for example, Women's History Month, Black History Month, the other months that are there. But that obviously didn't preclude the township. It was a, a discussion that could be had. And, and I appreciate you coming out tonight. I know you have a pretty packed schedule, so sure. thanks for taking the time. Um, and ultimately, it is up to the council but you know again we haven't had a past history of doing that and that's just a question of you know what is the role of government and do we want to or not want to so that's just where we stood right. so everybody knows we did have that conversation and just for the record, I um, uh, a member of another group that I'm a member of um, has flags on order, so that wouldn't incur any expense for the town. She's, I guess, paying out of her own pocket, and she's ordered 20, and she said we could have one. Anyone at council have any uh, comments or? I, I, you know, Dave, I support this but the problem that I have is that now we're going to do it for everybody once we open up the door Black History Month my wife is black so now I want Black History Month do they have a flag that people fly and flag. parades and all that so it's, but the problem is it opens the door for many different things I mean you know where do you draw the line but well, that's not saying be... that they can't do you know something you could you could still get together you could still um, do something at senior center you could still do something on your own it's not stopping anything like that right what would be wrong with flying a flag to be proud of the african-american community or black history month or nothing except you just open up the box for all kinds of things. i'm irish so we should fly the irish flag but is there an irish month you're irish irish pride it's month say patty's day why that flag that's not well, yeah. you, see, you know again this is the point is you know we support this equal rights for everybody Great. especially me okay but you know you have to draw the line on how much can we put up there I mean, so well when somebody else asks you can well you know what we're going to say we're going to say mm -hmm. the same thing we said we had this wonderful lady who came up from and, asked us. <laughs> and provided a flag right and provided exactly. a flag, but we had to say no because i'd be interested to know how many there are i mean are how you many opening, what? You know, how many different 
Organizations. Organizations or possibilities yeah. are there out there? Yeah, I mean, is, it, is it unmanageable or it's is it manageable? manageable. It's unmanageable. It's unmanageable. And it Why is it unmanageable is. to fly a flag? I don't Because you have all kinds of different groups that are going to want right. to fly a flag. Right. We've got the Italians, they want to fly their flag on, on <laughs> Columbus Day. There, there goes Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the Native <laughs> Americans might object to that. Uh, but. Well, but <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. so but you know, the point, you're right. You see, it's just one right. mess after uh, another. We would love to do it. I would really love to do it because I believe in that. Um, but in this particular case, and it's just too much we would end up doing. Okay, well, I'll be back next year then. Okay. All right, All right, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Any other public comment? Nick? No? All right. Uh, at this time, uh, we've reached 30 minutes, uh, as previously noted. Additional public that was comment quick, period <laughs> yeah, will be reserved <laughs> later in the meeting. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is the manager's report. Mr. Brewer. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Under the manager's report for this meeting, uh, cover a couple of items included on the agenda later. One of them is the BLS Emergency Services and Transportation Agreement. There is a resolution scheduled for the Council's consideration. Uh, competitive contracting was utilized to award a contract for Atlantic Ambulance Corps. This is a similar contract that we've had over the years? Correct. Yes. Uh, same level of service. Uh, everything remains consistent. Uh, it's just it was an exercise in compliance with public procurement regulations. So it authorizes a 12-month contract with four one-year renewals for a maximum of five years. Uh, obviously, at each renewal period, uh, it could be revisited. And if we wanted to go out anew, we could. Or we could renew the contract via resolution and move forward with the level of service it's currently provided. However, they do an outstanding job. They were the only the only responder to the request yeah. for proposals, well, that's which what I was, was noticed. We gave the opportunity for other people to put in, and nobody else put. Correct. In. It was published, and and it went all, all the requirements of an right. open public solicitation were followed, and, mm -hmm. and that was the one we got. And that's just during the weekdays, not that's weekends, right? Correct. Just correct. Six a.m. to six p.m. Mondays. But well, they are running all the time. They're just not covering our right. town after seven o'clock at night and on weekends. Yeah, they, they, from you know, seven to seven. The only thing that I've noticed is I do have the, the scanner. I mean, they are going. All over the place. Lincoln Park, Quantico, Butler, and there was that one recent call where the guy fell at Jersey Mike's and broke his legs. And 45 minutes it took for uh, the ambulance to get there during the day. Which is they, yeah, they call ours out on all call too. They yeah, did. They, did. Yeah, they yeah, called the anyway. county. They called everyone. Yeah, I was gonna say, and we also have county as a backup. backup. And, and you know, yeah, it took 45 you minutes. Gotta remember where we're at. Yeah, and that's because they were going the all over. And the challenge too is we're they're subject to the same mutual agreement, mutual aid agreements uh -huh. that we would be in. You know, it's it's an operational challenge. It is a subject of discussion that I had with the representative from uh, Atlantic. I think they have a total of three rigs now, Chilton. Yeah. I mean, they should be leaving at least one here. Yeah, they're right. they you know, we have a contract. They, they, yeah, we do have the contract with yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. something mm -hmm. that can... That's articulated within the contract and the agreement. But again, the challenge is if with the mutual aid agreements that exist, if you have someone that needs something and it's in a neighboring community and they go... Um, and, and this is a subject of discussion, not just with respect to ambulance. There's a few towns in Morris County that have paid firefighters. And one of their frustrations is their firefighters are constantly going to mutual aid calls in other municipalities. Right. Yeah. And they're going, wait a second, why am, I, right. why am I paying for a service that's being used for people with volunteers that can't meet that service? So this is, I think it's one of the challenges the associated with volunteerism and emergency services globally, not just with respect to this. And, and, the right. and I think the county is up to six rigs now. The county's going to be adding another rig or two in their budget. I'll get to that in the lower part of the county, Dave. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, uh, the next item in my report, uh, the festivals, carnivals, exhibitions, and shows, Chapter 75 of the Township's Municipal Code. We had a little uh, conversation about this previously, and uh, an application came in that was reviewed by staff and me and council, and we discussed it, and we determined that it really didn't meet the criteria of the ordinance. And then we were looking at the recent authorization of the Thunderbird show at the Presbyterian Church and mm -hmm. applying that to the same review. And we went, but wait a second, this kind of doesn't really either. So uh, again, consistent with the past discussion, I think this may be 
uh, component of the code that the council wants to revisit. But before that should take place, as we made the decision not to make a, another organization apply for this, and then we reviewed the Thunderbirds, we went, maybe we should refund the Thunderbirds. So if it's amenable to the Township Council, you know, we can schedule a resolution in the future refunding that as well. So there's nothing specifically says that's covering car shows? Correct. It could be a car show, it could be a motorcycle show, it could be anything with wheels. Yes. It says uh, any fair or festival, any tent show, outdoor trade show, or any circus, carnival, or similar outdoor amusement without obtaining a light. Yeah. So should we... I, I don't know how that... Isn't it kind of an outdoor, isn't it <coughs> no, an outdoor amusement? If people yeah. are going around looking at cars, wouldn't that be... It, it could be. I think we should. I didn't, I didn't come to that. That's why I wanted to talk to the council about it, and that's where I, I just, I wasn't sure, so. I, I think we need something, but I don't think the council should be approving, approving it. Yeah. You know, I, I think as long as it meets the zoning <coughs> and, and all the other requirements, why, why do we need to approve it? As long as the police are okay yeah. with it, the, the yeah. fire, the health department. Because if one of them goes bad, and we approved it. <laughs> It's going to come back and hit us in the face. Yeah, but I think they should still pull a permit. I mean, you have to pull a permit to have a garage sale. So I believe that if you're going to have a car show, a motorcycle show, it should still pull a permit so we know about it if there is an issue. Yeah, and that's the same thing as a carnival and everything yeah, else. We I should think so. keep that's can, fair. But just, potentially eliminate the council's yes. role. Yes, yeah, the council, no, we don't need You that. really have no control right. over what's happening here. Right. And there's almost like an illusion that you've reviewed it and you've approved it. And, yeah. and that's not the case. I mean, if it meets the zoning it. and we say no, how can we say no if it meets the zoning requirements? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's just for our, uh, so we're aware of yeah. certain well, that's things. That's fine. We they can become aware, but I don't think we need to. I don't think we need to approve it. I think right. we need to be aware of it, but I don't think we need to approve it. Okay. I so, agree. but with respect to Thunderbird Show, do we want to leave everything as it how is? Much, how much should they pay? Hundred dollars. Well, who did you say we? You said we already. There was an application sure? for uh, a business on Route 23 that was having a brief promotional barbecue. Okay. And they weren't sure if it applied, and, right. and so, we all so reviewed it and said it didn't really meet right. that. Right, I would guess that was something different because it was the motorcycles. They were stopping on their way up, yeah. and they were just yeah, having a bite to eat. Or this is an actual event. car show. Yeah. It's okay. an event. Yeah. I, again, I would only suggest that we amend Chapter 75 because we say any tent show. It should be any tent slash vehicle, car, right. however you want to. Right. Because if we said tent, we right. might as well see vehicle. What if I put up a tent? Does that mean I have to get a permit? Right. Did they have a tent over the barbecue? There you go. It's covered. Can we get it related? Of course. <laughs> and Adam, you're just bringing this up because you noticed it in the review Correct. process. And I, I just want like to make sure, we're, and, and I, I, the question came up with me and the staff, and I just wanted to make sure yeah. we were, and I was on the same page with council, and council was yeah, going however we wanted to do it. Yeah, I believe it was the rodeo. I said, why, why are we approving this? Right. Yeah. If it right. meets the, re, the zoning requirements. If it meets requirements. the zoning requirements. Right. And no, I, I agree with that. They I should mean, I think the police permit, department should, should know. Right. You know right. as long, if the police department, fire department zoning says, yeah. says yes. But see, the rodeo might be different. Different. And the only reason why I say that is because he already has a structure and it's within the structure. Yeah, but why do we need to approve it? We don't. No, that's we what I'm saying. Have. No, but we should, should he pull a permit for it? Oh, I, well. oh yeah, they I, should pull a permit. I think all permits should be pulled. So we know all of them. Yeah, yeah, well, they should all pull permits. Yeah. And we should just be aware. And of we should be aware. Yeah, yeah we don't have to. Not approve it. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, not at all. Okay. Yeah, so we'll prepare a draft ordinance for discussion, okay. confirm it meets with the council's expectations, and then we'll move forward with it. Beautiful. Thank you. And one last quick thing that's not in the written report. Um, I'd just like to report that uh, Mark Struble, the Director of Public Works, is on terminal leave. His retirement date will be July 1st. Yeah. And David Seigling has been appointed Acting Director during that period, and I anticipate appointing him Director Good choice. following mm -hmm. the conclusion of uh, Mr. Struble's tenure. That's it. Thank you. Beautiful. He will be missed. Did you yes. miss one item, or are you waiting on that one? Wasn't there something? Oh, else? sorry. I skipped Greenview Drainage. Yeah. Yes. Uh, additionally, on the list of resolutions for the council's consideration this evening is a resolution authorizing a professional services agreement, uh, non-fair and open submission to Schwanaweed and Hall's Engineering. Uh, it's an, in the amount of $17,825. This is for professional services and design services associated with the Green Greenview Drive drainage system, which, if the council members recall, there's been significant compromises. Someone was driving a lawnmower, a portion of it collapsed. Uh, so this is to have that redesigned and ultimately go out to bid and replaced. That's all.
May I ask for a clarification here? Do we decide to refund the Thunderbird no. Cartel no. or not? No. Okay. No. Thank you. That was just time. Thank you, Council. That's all. Right. So this was in the works for a while, though. This has been discussed in the works for a while. We We're have on set it. aside money in the capital. Yes. Budget. There's a hundred thousand dollars in the 2019 capital right. budget. Okay. I just want to make sure that was the same one. All right. There, there being no uh, public hearings this evening, there is also no ordinances scheduled for introduction. You're liking this, aren't you, Dave? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the agenda is resolutions. Ms. Marsh. For the council's consideration this evening, begin with resolution R-2019-123, authorizing a professional services agreement between the Township of Aquanic and Schwanaweed Halls Engineering. 2019-124, awarding a contract for BLS emergency services and transportation to Atlantic Ambulance Corps in accordance with the request for proposals for a period of 12 months and including the option of four subsequent one-year renewal periods. R-2000, wow. Really? R 2019 <laughs> set 125 awarding a contract for a concession provider for various events of the Parks and Recreation Department to the Empanada Times for the contribution amount of $200 in accordance with the request for proposals. 2019 126 approving the renewal of the designated alcoholic beverage control licenses. 2019 127 authorizing cancellation of outstanding checks. 2019-128, canceling grant fund balances. 2019-129, <coughs> authorizing participation in an electronic tax sale program in 2019. 2019-130, authorizing release of designated escrow deposits. 2019-131, authorizing tax office refunds, overpayments, or cancellation. And 2019-132, approving payment of the itemized claims as set forth on the June, thir June 6, 2019 bill list and the June 6, 2019, 2015, and 2016 FEMA elevation escrow list. Are there any comments on the resolutions from Council? I have one on 2019-125. I just wanted to you to kind of um, you know, just to clarify that a little bit more, what we're doing. We're actually naming the um, the events, like what happens if another event comes up that maybe wasn't named here, or we got or, or in, in order to. to th this is the second award of this type. In order to mm -hmm. have a concession at a municipal event, mm -hmm. it has to go through a process. Mm -hmm. So we undertook this earlier on in the year, okay. and one of the questions council had was, "Well, what if we get more people?" And I right. said, "Well, we're going to go back out to see if we get more people right. because I think this is a new right. enhancement in compliance mm -hmm. activity." Um, so this was a situation where we went back out and they, they submitted for the balance of the events in the year. Right. And again, we, it was only, so it was, all right, so it's not like we went out to get a new bid. It was just. No, we just, we, the, we've gone out again right, just to attract people more people to give like people a, a chance. Right. I saw Correct. That. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're just adding. Correct. Just adding. Just okay. adding more people. Good. Yes. So again, just to clarify, so this is a legal contract to guarantee that this vendor is going to be at these locations for these times throughout the year correct that's why they're doing it and, and it allows for them because absent a process like this one having a for-profit business selling items at a municipal activity is not so there has to be compliant. some kind of contract to and, 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 and a competitive is. procurement process where there's an RFP published for a minimum of time on a website mm -hmm. so on and so forth All right. okay. uh, good. Good question on 126 are we going to say anything Dave on I was just going to say, in, in a sense, it's more of a license that we give them than a contract. Okay. Oh, for right, so they don't have to be there, yeah. but they can be yeah. there? Got it. That's right. Well, they're, okay. they're, yeah, they're, they're paying us the fee, and if they choose for some reason not to show up, Okay. Gotcha. Obviously, these are some smaller events, and it's a nominal fee. Okay. Um, if you look at some of the larger activities, sometimes the numbers get more significant. For example, if you have a, a snack stand and you're going out for a professional uh, snack stand manager for a mm -hmm. pool that's got tens of thousands of residents, that can be a large money deal. Right. Right. Uh, the Persephone Township Golf Course, the Knoll Country Club, is done mm -hmm. through concession. Okay. <laughs> So I have Thanks. a question on 126. That's not all of the uh, no. establishments. No. That would be still correct. Work. There are three establishments that have not yet met all the criteria for renewing the licenses. All three have assured me that they will be ready for the next council meeting. Okay. 
Special Service. I don't have jurisdiction to renew council meetings, council, you know, review licenses unless all the requirements are met. Okay. I was just curious because there's some missing. That's why I was. Three, to be exact. I wasn't is, there a, <laughs> is there a certain time frame they have to be in by then? Yes. By June 30th. They have to be approved by June 30th or else they have to have what's called an ad interim. They okay. Can, they can do it for a 30-day period at a time. We're trying to avoid that. Yeah. It's a lot of paperwork for everybody. Yeah. Any other comments? No. no. Is there a motion to adopt these resolutions? I'll make, make a, a motion. motion to adopt. Go ahead. Go ahead. Guys, work Go ahead, Ryan. Locks, paper, scissors. All right. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution R2019-123 through R2019-132. Melissa, you want a second? Sure. I'll second. <laughs> Roll call, please. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mrs. Russell? Yes. Mayor Cole? Yes. Uh, next on the agenda is items for discussion. On, there are none this evening. Uh, next on the agenda is reports and notices, and there are no reports and notices. Next on the agenda is reports and announcements. Um, Councilwoman Florence Lynch? Um, were they... Are they included in here? Are you talking about the ones I mentioned before? The reports and notices? Yeah. What? No, you had asked me for reports. You're, you're first on my list. Oh, <laughs> you said reports and notices. Yeah. <laughs> Next on the agenda is council reports I'm and sorry. announcements. No, I'm okay. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, ah, it's been a long day. Moving too quick, Mayor. So, <laughs> all right, a couple things I wanted to bring up. Um, <coughs> Well, first, there was two things we got. I don't know if I can, I guess I can bring these up now. There was two uh, notices we got during the week through it with, the meet, with the advisories. From Michelle. Um, from Michelle. And I just thought it was interesting. The one letter was about the New Jersey Food Council. Um, you know, with the, uh, there was support there for the uniform statewide solution to phasing out the, the bags, the plastic bags and paper bags. I just thought that was interesting because they were talking about how municipalities around the state are doing these local ordinances, which is just causing a lot of confusion. Um, and it makes for, it's very cumbersome, makes for a lot of, uh, you know, problems. But it just, it showed a um, path to progress resolution where it would be, um, you know, working, you know, th that there'd be a state you know, it would be done at the state level. So I don't know if you guys read that. There was a report about recommendations from the New Jersey Economic and Fiscal Policy Work Group, and I just thought that was interesting. And I guess they're, I don't know if they're, they're asking municipalities to have, that they'll work with the environmental commissions to explore, um, you know, solutions to that. So I didn't know if that was something that the green teams or the environmental commissions wanted to explore. The, the that, environmental commission is looking to collect bags we're going to try to collect a bag mm -hmm. to X amount of bags a tonnage and okay. so long we get a free bench from tracks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no I just thought that it was interesting um, so that was the one uh, what else um, all right master plan survey do we have an update on how we're doing with uh, our survey results I guess we'll get that from from Eric and we'll from our next steering, right. we have our big our next steering meeting, steering committee meeting on uh, I think next meeting at five o'clock. Yes. Next. I don't I don't have any results. Right. Okay. This evening. Um, I still have a lot of people saying that they're not aware of it, so I'm just trying to you know push it out to as many people as possible, and I guess we're all doing that. So um, we have to continue to do that, get people to go to the Quantic website. I don't know if you're still collecting manual. We, um, any any ones. any yeah, are you be hard are copy? you refilling them at light? At the library or town hall or we've, senior center. We've made a bunch yeah. of copies. I know we've given a lot Good. here. I don't know about okay. the library. I can check. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, a couple of comments. The uh, Chamber of Commerce Street Fair, I think, was a great success. Um, as always, they do a wonderful job. So um, I think, I don't know if we have numbers of how many people came, but it seemed to be a really good, successful day. Um, I also uh, attended the Rotary 5K run and wanted to thank DPW and the Parks and Rec for all their help. I think there was approximately 220 runners, mm. and it was a beautiful day. Um, everybody knows the wet down is Saturday. 
at Company 2. Um, Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, my committee met last week. I followed up with a couple of things with Adam. Um, they are having a luncheon at the Senior House. Uh, the, the senior the senior luncheon is at the senior house um, next Tuesday, and they're having a talk on health and nutrition that starts at one. Uh, what else? And the economic development committee um, they're supposed to be meeting uh, next um, the fourth Wednesday of the month, so that's um, in two weeks. And Eric from H2M uh, is supposed to sit with them at that meeting. So we'll get an update on the master plan. And the flood committee meets this Thursday at 7.30. I'm trying to think if I have anything else. And that's it. I don't really have anything else uh, to say. Um, that's about it. All right. Thank you. Councilman Hurd. Thank you, Mayor. Well, that's a beautiful day. First, I want to lead off that uh, Little League, our closing ceremonies were uh, just before. And uh, the Minions, my team, won first place. Just Yay, saying. congratulations. Oh, just say. Just say. You know. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. In both open space and historic uh, committee meetings, we were going over the master plan. And there has been some questions about master plan uh, in both committee uh, meetings on <coughs> any amendments. How is that dealt with going forward? We talked about that earlier. Uh, but there's concerns that any changes after the master plan is adopted, things change, things get added, whatever. Uh, that would just be an amendment to the existing master plan, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. What else? We have, I went to in uh, Mayor Cole's place, thank you very much, to the Morris County Freeholders Mayor's meeting, which was really interesting. A lot of stuff I did not realize. How many assets at the committee, at the county level that we have, from seniors to veterans. I picked up a whole bunch of uh, pamphlets here. I got to say, uh, both the Health and Human Services and the Veterans Administration offices, I would definitely uh, leverage any kind of uh, programs that they have. Some of the suggestions from the other mayors were to because they're looking for us to also help get the word out. They have the same issue as us. How do we disseminate information? Our issue is getting it to the residents. Their issue is getting it to countywide uh, residents. So one of the ideas is that they're going to be pushing the information to us, and then we can leverage our social media platforms locally to push that out. Uh, so I'm sure that we will be seeing something like that going forward. Uh, I know that this always came up about recycling, and I just picked this up when I was over there because it was interesting that just to remind everybody what electronics are mandated by law to be recycled, and we know we see them on the side of the road every once in a while, but televisions, computers, computer monitors, laptops, tablets, printers, and fax machines. So at the county level, household hazardous waste facility, it's by appointment only, you got to call 973-829-8006. There's also ERI, Electronic Recyclers International, again by appointment only, calling 1-800-572-5300. I am not sure if either one of those charge, but the other places like Best Buy, Staples, and Green Vision does charge. So I put, pick these up for you. Thank you. Adam. Is the second one you read, is that the one in Lincoln Park? R E I. Yeah, there's one in Lincoln Park. Yeah, yeah, I one think of, so. one in Lincoln Park that's free. Another reminder for Morris County Communications Division uh, to get everybody on smart911.com. Uh, it's the new system, so this way they can push notification to everybody on their phones. Uh, I know we spoke about Morris County OEM. I'd like to come in and talk to you about a bunch of other things that uh, I found out down there. I, we did talk about the ambulance. They're adding another ambulance to their fleet. Uh, so that's going to enable them. And it was interesting that their whole philosophy is to be the ultimate backstop. So we have, they don't want to take anything away from us. They don't want to take anything away from our volunteers or if we have an agreement, a third party agreement. But if there is an issue, they want to be the ultimate backstop. So they will be pre-positioning rigs around the county. Uh, they do want to get down to a response time, I believe, of six minutes or 6.30. Uh, that is their ultimate goal, and it seems like they're doing a pretty decent job, except for the incident that happened over here. So hopefully we'll take care of that. Other than that, 
that's all I have. It was a beautiful day. All right. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Fallon. Well, first off, Ryan, congratulations on your team. The Minions. First. <laughs> the Minions. Yes. It was very important for them. <laughs> um, West Parkway, when are they going to start paving that? What's the plan? Uh, right after school. Right after school. Okay. Boulevard. What are they doing with the Boulevard? County's paving that we're trying to stage it so that we get through our paving before they initiate their paving. Obviously, different contractors, different contracts, different elements of government. We're doing our best. Long story short, long story short, the possibility exists they could happen at the same time or one shortly after the other. We're hoping it's not at the same time because obviously the feeder routes north and south in the township would all have to then push to the but turnpike. It's going to happen relatively soon. It will happen this summer. Yeah, it'll probably happen the exact same time for after school also. Correct. Yeah. But we're hoping that it's right. You know, gives we're. we're having about two weeks of paving the two weeks after school there'll be a flurry of paving through the municipal projects and then hopefully right after that okay that's it that's all i have councilwoman russell um uh, environmental and library are both meeting tomorrow and and i also have a softball game so i'm going to be running around a little bit tomorrow oh, trying to make it all so it'll be fun um parks and rec um they actually said the chamber which i didn't hear before but the chamber is looking into purchasing a stage for concerts yes. for them so that'll they said they do that so that's going to be great um do they know where Oh, you mean like a portable? Like a portable yeah. stage, you know, like like almost like use. we use yeah. for okay. different things. Mm -hmm. But that would be nice to have, that they get a portable stage and you can put out. Yeah. Um, they did say there was one issue at PV Park where somebody had to be asked to leave, and I know a couple of, I've spoken with you about it, mm -hmm. Adam, and I wonder if there's a way that we can find out these things. If Like every two weeks, if there's an incident that happens at PV Park. Yeah, just, um, just for the benefit of discussion, and if you don't mind, no, the ahead. council when I had a conversation and she asked, you know, is that something that would only rise to the level where it'd be communicated to council? My response was no. It's a, it's an operational matter that was handled as normal business. It wasn't something that was extraordinary in terms of right. anything beyond that. That said, so I, I, it wouldn't be something that I would normally volunteer to the council, except for once we have our global discussion, a summary would be provided <coughs> with everything with dates and everything else. However, obviously, if council wishes to ask for a regular report or I think our, statistics. I think our concern is we, we've had residents here complaining about right. certain yeah. incidents and you know we're taking the wrath from them mm -hmm. and we want to be able to go back and say hey we're we're aware of one incident of bongo players or whatever yeah. and now just to uh, clarify we do have a process to log Correct. any issues that right. do happen and we have a process to take care of it if an, uh, an issue arises correct okay. and, and yeah, it is as we discussed previously right. there is there are records being kept and you know if council wants that there's no prohibition of council I think, for that, I think it would I'll be helpful provide. especially yeah. around the park there because it's been such a big discussion and it's seasonal and you know I'd yeah. like to see reports and I also processes that have changed right especially it, it seems like it it worked out well but you know at first I don't know if everybody knows but at first they were caught with alcohol they were freely drinking it on the beach and it was taken away and then they they felt that possibly they had some hidden because one of the guys was swimming and he was in distress although he wouldn't get on the board so they had to help him on the board and then uh, the police were called. Now there was somebody told me today that, and this is this is all goes with you know how much we know. They said, oh, there was three there, and only one of them was asked to leave, and the other two stayed, and and, and they were not from town, um, and they were in on a day pass. So I just think knowing all of that, when because it is such a hot topic, topic, and and some people are very sensitive about it. It'd be nice that when. When people when somebody come up to, confronts us, we right, say, we, oh, yeah, we're aware yeah. of that. Right, oh. and we're not saying, oh, when did this happen? Right. What happened, you know? My oh. only question is, what what do we get notified and what don't we get notified? Right, I mean, you know, that's what I didn't understand. Well, you know, well, the, the, the council is a legislative body. What, when, when it's, it's, it's not an operational body. So right, we the, understand. the charge is to be, but like I said, if, if the council, because of some sensitivity to this, yeah, to be aware. wants the reports, there's no problem. If, if right. council asks for that, it will absolutely be provided. That's for the it's, it's unique, though. It's unlike any other department. And, and one of the challenges is there are you know more than 100 employees in the township. Of there are constant events that happen. You know, This is something that if the council decides they want to be notified of and asks for it, it'll absolutely be provided so I guess but independent of that request I, I can't filter out 
you know, what Councilman Hurd is interested in versus what Councilwoman Florence Lynch is. Based right. upon the form of government, if the council as a whole makes a request, it'll absolutely be complied with. But absent that, yeah. it's not something that's going to be constantly. Well, I would say because it's it's a seasonal thing, the park opened, we've had discussions about it, it was too late to really do any, you know, we're supposed to have this committee to look at, you know, the operations of PV Park, but you're still, I guess, gathering that information. Yeah, there, there, so I the, think the financial operational right. Information is being compiled and working on that as has been reported. Obviously, we're getting participation information right. now. With respect to the too late to do anything, I think the discussion came up during the budget process right. of a rate increase. Yeah. So I think gathering the information as we're moving through the season, mm -hmm. the council will get a report of incidents and right. all the other things. That would be great. We can have a conversation about you know what rate structure should be in place, shouldn't be in place, what eligibility for participation should exist or shouldn't exist, and then with all that data, you know, a data-driven decision can be made. For 2020, plenty of time. Right. So, I, my question is, what is going to be reported? Tommy and Johnny have uh, two 15-year-old kids at fight at PV Park. I think as soon as the police are involved, yeah. we want to know that. If somebody so has to be if escorted if out, if someone is asked to hurt. leave and they leave without the police coming, that's fine. What if, they were, what if they were drinking well, and playing bongo drugs I, I think, that we don't know about? I think he knows. I, 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 no, no, I, I think you know, if the council would like the reports of the activities at PV Park, there, there's going to be whatever the daily log is yeah. all activity is going to be reported well, I have a question so it's uh, I don't want to put myself or the staff in a position where they need to need to make a determination right. of what should or shouldn't be filled so if, anyway. if there's a log that is created right. and yeah, maintained yeah. a summary of that will be provided by the parks rec department and then that'll just be passed up through the that's reporting. perfect that that's, be good. you're going to be doing it anyway so yeah. it's not so extra. So I'm so just so going to take their work, work and share it with council where ordinarily that wouldn't take place Councilman right. Woman Russell. On Parks and Rec, do, does the uh, ranger still give a report? Yes, the ranger still gives a report. And it's still and, very and um, it's, granular, right? Everything that they're doing. and if Yes, they he to does. He's, he's pretty stuff. specific and everything. And Barb uh, did give a report, and that's where I heard about what happened, but Parks and Rec won't be meeting over the summer, so uh, that was that was my concern. Well, so now, can we get those we reports hear? funneled to us? Yeah, we used to. Because the ranger, we used to get the ranger. Did reports. we get the ranger report? Yes, we did. Used to. Okay, so. We got it for a while, and then oh, we did. Stop. Yes, I can. I can forward yeah. it to you. That would be great. Yeah, but well, you're not going to get it for July um, and August. Yeah, but maybe she'll. Still, I'll ask that she. Well, no, the ranger it. should still be making his report, right? right? Yeah. I would like, yeah. I would like because it was a good and a report from the. Park it was there. a good report, like it sure was. It, whether it was uh, <laughs> over at PV Park, whether it was anywhere in the town, mm -hmm. if they found somebody hiking and it shouldn't be or whatever it was, it was in that report and it just gave you a global view of right something that's going on. So just so I'm clear, the the consensus of council is that the staff will pass up the incident okay. reports from PV Park, and if my understanding of this conversation is accurate, the liaison in council. Woman Russell will share the report provided to the Parks and Rec Committee from the region. You're going to have to ask Barb for that. Yeah, I'll get it from Barb. I'll ask for it. Either that, or can you just have Barb send us both up? Whichever's easy, whichever you want to do. Yeah, whatever's the. However you want to do it. Come from Adam, I guess. Or Adam, that's true. <laughs> that's your problem, Adam. So he's Thanks, gotta buddy. Click, he's got to click one more button. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then I, I will have staff po pass Thank both you. up. Um, in some periodic fashion, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, something mm -hmm. of that nature. Council meetings? Whatever. Once a month. I'll figure out a way to get yeah. you. Yeah. Well, However they do it. Bi-weekly, unless the police are informed, then I'd kind of make yeah, it like true, a little sooner. Yeah. Is that possible? Especially if it has to do with the PV Park, because we know that there, well, how there do might the be an issue. departments do the reports? I, the departments do monthly reports that, that submit them. Um, I, I, I candidly have concerns over providing real-time reports, yeah, I think, right. because yeah. I may not even know. I mean, the monthly report it's three is days after do, that. Do, the, do the police get called that often? I don't know. <laughs> we don't know see, yet. See, th that was I, I, don't, I, just, I, just, I just candidly have concerns over yeah. the level yeah. of... Adam, there, there's, it seems to there's, me there's, that there's a little report. bit too much of yes. the operational dynamic associated but with the legislative body. It seems to me that a monthly report is fine, yeah. and if there's something that's... 
yeah. out of the norm, you and send an norm. email like you normally do, sure. saying this is the incident. And I just put in the manager's report, right, or whatever. Any incidents? I'm, no I'm, real incidents to talk. I'm, I'm careful. The, the manager's weekly report is really just a sharing of information of things that I'm working on. It's not. I, I, I'm careful so that there's nothing that is sensitive from a litigation perspective. All those documents are operable. So. Okay. All right. Well, you figure yeah. it out. Keep that. <laughs> I, I try to keep. That, I try to keep that. Yeah, so as that a, yeah. Hey, this is kind of the stuff because, that I'm working on. Because last the year we were told there was zero <laughs> police having to be called. Yeah, the place so, just opened so up. So that, that's and the place just opened up, and we've had one. So that's why I'm a little concerned. Um, which is, you know, if something out of the ordinary. So, so is the best way up. that Councilwoman Russell? Is telling us in a report. I mean, would that be the appropriate way then? But there's no meeting. There's no meetings of, for her to be the There's no meeting, the so she won't. You know. So she's not going to tell us anything in July and August. Because mm. she's not. She's not right. So we. we so I suggest Councilwoman yeah. Russell stay there every day in July and August. <laughs> so no, it makes sense. So the, <laughs> I have the to. department, the department will still do the, the report through the summer. You'll get it. We'll what, what, what I'm thinking as we sit here is most logically as a component of the manager's report. I'll just ask that yeah. Parks and Recreation provide me with those reports. Uh, our deadline for documents is Thursday at the noon okay. before the upcoming council meeting, and then yeah. it'll be included in the packet that goes out of the Simple. Yeah, because it's seasonal, yeah. and it's only like two I months. I mean, if it's, so. a, if it's a police matter, I, other than the police being called to PV Park, I don't think we're going to get details. Oh, well, we don't need no. details. We no. just need to be aware. I need to highlight. Yeah. Adam will figure it out. Yeah. I mean, we don't want to give you extra work. We just want to be no. Just just taking aware. existing reports and following up yeah. is, right. is, is is fine. That's okay. something that Thank can you. provided again provided there's consensus in the council that right. that's what's desired. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. What are the well, it's pretty bright in here. These new lights are pretty good. So <laughs> anybody else notice that it's bright in here? Frank, did you notice? Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking it was. We haven't had. It's not raining. New lights. <laughs> and we can see Frank in the back there. Look at that. This was a component of the grant project through PSC and G, where we're paying thirty cents on the dollar. Oh, perfect! Yay! Adam's always looking to save us money. Increase our efficiency. So the wet down is this Saturday. I'm still not sure if I'm going to be there. I may be in Boston on uh, Friday, Saturday, and oh, Sunday, boy. but and I that's what mind. two to five. Two to five. Is that the right time? Uh, yes, but it, that's something that just continues on. Oh, yeah. But it starts at two. Yes. Okay. Uh, planning board met last week. Nothing really going on there. I was at the STEM program uh, the night that Ryan went to the county STEM program at the high school. Mm -hmm. uh, that Ryan went to the county uh, meeting, and I also the other night I was at the PV uh, middle school award ceremony. I will be attending the PV school graduation, and I think did everyone respond about the high school graduation? I'm going. Yes. And the way it works usually is if it's nice, we all go. If it if it gets right. moved inside, we give our seats back because I don't want to take any seat from grandma and grandpa. Yeah, true. Uh, so if it does get moved inside, usually we don't go. Is that, that, is that, that is correct? We're all going to be on the same page on that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What day is it again? 19th. Uh, I was in Texas last week. Um, did the fence company come back in? What the planning board? No. No? Okay. I'm just curious. I'm uh, surprised not much is happening there, huh? Yeah, uh, well, there's some things, but nothing, yes. nothing major, so. Um, that's all I had then, really. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, first day squad I met last night. There was a total of 53 calls for the month of May. Uh, a couple of things that they participated in, the Memorial Day Parade, we all know the Street Fair, Holy Spirit Carnival, Sister Marie must have connections with the good weather uh, <laughs> right because away. it was right. beautiful the whole time. The, the, that, that, that was the last time that they I, had I so much good weather. It this was record-setting numbers. Yeah. I was at the Senior Olympics the other day at Greenview Park, which was hosted by uh, Pequannock uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, there was six other towns, Paquanic and five other towns there. It seemed like they had a great time. Uh, and the, uh, as uh, Councilwoman uh, Florence Lynch said, the Paquanic Rotary uh, 5K race was this past weekend, and it was tremendous. They had great weather that day, too, and a lot of participants, so I was glad to see that. All right, next on the agenda is public comment. If anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized. Come to the microphone and provide your name and address for the record. I see Mr. Spaziri is walking forward. Now here he comes. Frank Spaziri, 45 West Franklin. Uh, 
in my prior stint up here, I failed to mention two things. Um, Parks and Rec is, was pretty much the same feeling that we had that we weren't going to be able, we weren't going to be doing this book that we have again. And the other thing that I just want to mention, I've been on the Open Space Committee for so long that I'm now on my third manager, <laughs> and probably 12 of you people that are sitting up there. So we have continuity, and I think very good continuity, because we're, we're always trying to be ahead of the game, and you all know that. I and I just wanted to stress that point. And it, Frank, we, we realize that. I, I understand that, but we've known you. You gotta, you gotta realize that it, to me, it bothers me about this whole oh, thing it, with, it the, would, it would make with, me with the master plan. It just, I don't know, don't sit right with me. We'll talk about it at the next just, steering committee. I always it, just it, Frank, it. Just, just to the clarify, lead. too, for the benefit of the right. public record, the master plan is a vision. And not unlike many documents in government, it's meant to be dynamic. It is based on law, the jurisdiction of the planning board. So it's the planning board's obligation to do it with input from all of these people. Right. So it is, it is certainly not something set in stone, and it is certainly not something that disregards the input and the comments from others. However, it is something that has to be updated. Right, I understand that. Uh, it's just how it's being done is what bothers me. We feel, I feel, and most of the, as Ryan can attest, most of the people that were at the, at the meeting felt pretty much the same I did. I did most of the argument because somebody got to speak up, but. I can attest to that. <laughs> um, Eric said he didn't want to argue, and I said, yes, I do, but anyway. <laughs> I, but I was trying to just stress my point that, you know, we take, uh, we're only volunteers, but we take it very seriously. And I did, as you know, took it as, as seriously as I could to do the best for this community and also for the township. Let okay? the initiative to 50 something. And I just feel that this is sort of taking away that edge that we have as an advisory committee that's but that's why that's i, I want to clarify that it's it's a document that's the domain of the planning board it is not discrediting any effort i, I understand that it's just uh, well you know here's actually a question the document that they created will anything actually really change in that document or is it just going to be merged into the master plan you're talking about that document that frank has yes i doubt if anything's changed that's what i was yeah. going to say it took so I'm much effort everything is taken if care you of. got a good thing right. you know I don't. I don't think they're going to advance. Because the way I looked at it was the master plan had so many other elements to it that your committee did, right. didn't address. True. So they would just take review it with you and whoever, and and make sure that that's the way you want it to be, and then implement it in the overall master plan. Right. That's, that's, that's right. the way I. That's the way I looked at it. Yeah, I don't think you're the. And thank you. There's something okay. you haven't and thought of that you did in 2012 that you'd like to add in. Mm -hmm. Now's your time. And it should and be a living, breathing document, so it can exactly. Be and then there are three minutes. But it should be done. It should be done by the committee that. Right. So is on, well, on, I, that, I, that's I, where I, there's I, a difference in the process, that, Frank. Yeah. The, the committees have the ability to develop a plan, but the committees don't have the obligation or the legal requirement to prepare elements of the master plan. They can make recommendations, but the law specifically states that the jurisdiction of the master plan is the planning board. That's well. Yes and no. No, yes. We, yes. With all due respect, that's what the municipal land use law says. Well, we got told we had to do this and and enter it into the master plan to make it mm -hmm. update it from the 2002 that was originally done by somebody else. Right. It was adopted by the plan. And then it was adopted by the planning board as a component of the master plan. Right. Yes. And then and, and that's why I'm saying somebody somebody asked you to take care of something because it was they were. Asking. Well, otherwise we wouldn't get any funds. Right. No, no, right. They were asking you to take care of something because they weren't. The point is now there's a comprehensive this is this is where the council made a decision to, in early 2018 to do a comprehensive master plan because so much has changed in the community and it hadn't been done in a significant period of time it has an open space though we did it right. and that's why it's being probably, taken into account the only group frank we'll protect your stuff okay yeah, remember there's three members of the steering committee sitting on this dais right now we hear you loud and clear yeah we have a meeting in two weeks and we can discuss this that's another thing uh, i asked the question who is on the steering committee. I, we had no idea who was on the steering committee. I know you're on it. I'm on it. 
and you on it and, and there you members go. of the planning board and that's the only one and, and my question to eric was well, well how come there was nobody from any of the committees that was on the steering committee to help steer, steer well, them well, in the right direction well, how do well, i know so that far, you guys are going to do the right thing i don't know that until i get the draft copy from this guy eric and say okay here's here's what i'm going to put in the master plan okay i'll sit down and i'll read it now do i have time to to go against whatever he's got in there and say no i don't want this and and redo the whole thing like you, like you have you before. Could make comment but again frank it's a it's a document that's the domain of the planning board. right and frank to be honest with you i don't see why they would even change that no right. hey, it's frank, a good thing they're not going to mess with it frank truthfully all that's been done so far is the surveys and right. collecting input and having public sessions so i would think that one and correct me if i walk wrong we'll talk about it at the next meeting but i would think that you know that's why they were meeting with different committees and then if they need to meet with you separately and do something they will well they he did meet with us but, but, but there was only seven questions on that survey that he wanted answers for seven questions to me doesn't spell out what we'll we the committee want to do the book does okay. he, he has the so plan. To, he, he, he has a copy of the plan i know he does because i brought one last night i said if you don't have it here's the document as electronic i sent it to him. i mean if anything we just shouldn't okay. anyway okay I, I don't want to be a dead horse that change that okay Trust if you got something great why get rid of it Trust me. thank you right. any other comments you? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Hello. How are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, my name is Kelly Jackson, 69 Hopper Avenue, Compton Plains. I'm actually here for um, a master's class in social policy. All but right. I figured while I'm here as a community member, I did want to ask if, I don't know if this is the place, but any um, thoughts on putting a speed bump, speed hump on Hopper Avenue between the boulevard and West End? It's used as a cut through for high school students, and there just happens to be a lot of children on that street. I know there's a lot of children on all the streets, and this is just one street that I happen to live on, so I'm asking about it. But I figured it was worth asking since I was here. Mm. There's um, only one street that has speed pumps. Or that'd be Tilly. My That's street. Tilly. <clears throat> we got two. Yeah. <laughs> but Hopper is a big cut through as well, and so is Mountain. So I think they're more of a nuisance than. The, the, discussion about speed humps and speed bumps and speed tables which is another longer version of it, it is an interesting one um, I'd be happy to dialogue with you offline there there are pros and there are a lot of cons I like um, the noise that yeah. The, 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 time car goes over the noise, the impact on snow anyway. operations, the, there's there's a lot of dynamic to it. Um, typically, municipal engineers, of which I am not one, but in my professional experience, municipal engineers advocate against them. Um, they usually are installed because of some other need, uh, direction from a body such as this one. Uh, but we can take a look at it, and if there are speeding issues and other dynamics, I'd love to put in place you know, the signage and targeted enforcement and maybe some steps to address some of the concerns before we potentially would consider speed humps. Okay, great. But that's definitely something that we can do. So after this, I'll get so my card. 69, is that, is, you said 69 Hopper? Mm -hmm. Is that between the boulevard and yeah. the turnpike, or? Uh, it's between boulevard, boulevard and, and West End. Yeah. But, okay. And years ago, there was that blinking light there, which right. I know is a whole discussion. No, no. Yeah. Well, no. I, I, every once in a while, somebody will say to me, they think that by putting it back there would help, but I, apparently well, I, 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 I live on the dead end of cars Yeah, I was going to say, I live in a cold There will be direction. To have some targeted yeah, enforcement and, and every sign they race to through. educate people about how fast they're going. There's, there are definitely things we can do short of that that can hopefully try to address some of your things. You know what the sign we were yes. talking about? I mean, it, it yes, attaches the, to the, and it says, when you go by, it says, your, you know, it gives your speed. Yeah, and usually you guys put one up every June, yeah. it seems like, like kind of right by the house, which is great, but it's usually the school year that's the bigger problem. Maybe we can get some sure. uh, okay. drive like your kids live here signs on Hopper, too. That's true. Yeah, yeah they did. The, um, they did strictly enforced on Mountain, and I think for a little while they really kept an eye on there. And I think that really sort of they used to do that. Used to have people coming coming to work, and they would just the only, the only problem with targeting local streets is you, you get your local people. Get the, <laughs> we're gonna get your neighbor. <laughs> you. Hopefully not you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can also let you know while I'm here that I texted my husband Nicholas Jackson, and they do have paper copies of the survey at the library. Thank you. Excellent. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Actually. Building off of her, I do have to make a complaint. 
for speeding. About her? No, no <laughs> she was excellent, but she did remind me of something. As I run uh, in the morning, and I run down, uh, was it Parkway? Where's Parkway? I gotta tell you, around that 5.36 a.m., it's crazy. And these people are flying, and every single time I almost get hit. So, did I almost hit you? Probably once no, or twice. No. Close. That's on sunset. And if, no, but if, if, if there's fresh pavement, it will get worse. At yeah. six a.m., yeah. we definitely got to do something. Put up the uh, the you know clock your speed stuff. It, it's it's an issue. I live on a dead end. My and cars the do forty five. Yeah, it's miles crazy. Hour, and they're all younger than me. Who are well, and you can tell when you know uh, certain. You know, commercial establishment has a changeover in the people. Oh, yeah. oh. I can tell you right away. So, just my Any other public it? comments? <laughs> no? <laughs> All right. There are no minutes uh, presented for approval this evening. Next on the agenda is closed session. Are there any closed sessions? No, sir. No. All right. All right. There being no further business, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll, I'll make, make that, that motion. motion. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Meeting adjourned at 8.05. All right.